Well, as most of you know, and you know, we've been uh, talking about the situation with uh, Jack Wilarski today, and we've had Rudy Yakum on, and we're reaching out to other candidates as well. Uh, we have another candidate running for the Congressional District 2 seat, and that is Marla Cadet. Marla, how are you today? I am well. How are you? It's good to talk to you again. And this was this was actually kind of a surprise. When your husband contacted me and let me know that you were running, I was like, is she running as an independent? And he's like, yep, yeah, she is. And I thought that this was a really interesting move. So first of all, just I want you to introduce yourself for people who don't remember who you are. But then we'll get into what actually motivated you to run for the second congressional district as an independent. Well, my name is Marla Godet. I live in this area and I, um, yes, I'm running as an independent. I, I have always been pretty independent when it comes to political things. Um, I come from the Detroit area. Mm -hmm. I have, Lots of family that work GM Chrysler Ford, very, very heavy union. And I worked on the non-union side. And so I understand that value system. Um, and I was able to make it work. I worked with teachers and then I worked with administrators. I've worked in situations where you had to be the person who cleaned the toilet and the person who owns the building. And so just having that value system of, I may not agree with this one thing or have this certain belief, but other people do. And how did they get there? How, how did they manage to have that belief over this one? But yet we still go to the same church, you know, that, that yeah. type thing. And so it's, it's, that independence that we really can come to some type of agreement when it comes to certain things. So is that what kind of just motivated you to, to look at this as an independent thing rather than running for either of the, the two major parties or the big third party option, you know, just looking at it and saying, I, I don't, I don't think that I really felt like I belonged to one of those and you had ideas from all of them. Is that how that kind of came together? For me, that's how it's always been. I have not been one to say I'm a this or I'm a that. And I don't like to be pigeon held to those things because I have Republican beliefs and I have Democratic beliefs. Mm -hmm. And when you say someone is a this or a that, then people automatically get this mindset of you. Oh, then you're this and you're that. And oh, and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And it, it, it may not be true. I wouldn't know anything about that, Marla. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that at all. Crazy. Your your husband and I have conversations about that all the time. So, <laughs> um, so I mean, you know, look, you're you're born and raised in the Midwest, but you said you know you kind of come from the Detroit side of things. But you you've seen both sides of it, union, non union, that sort of thing. Um, you've you've got uh, is it one or two sons in the military now? Okay, um, now there's one active. One active, okay. Our oldest okay. was in the Marines, and he did nine years and came out, and uh, the second son is active in the Navy. Okay. All right, well, here, I, look, I can't. We, we planned this interview before this happened. All right, I want everybody to, be, to know that. It's crystal clear. Like, this is not something that Marla was expecting when we came on, but I, I have to ask you, and I will ask any other candidate that comes on, too, when you mm -hmm. see Joe Biden you know, ask for Jackie Wilarski at this event, like what's going through your mind when you see that as somebody who's r looking to run and, and take over her, her spot? Um, <laughs> so I feel like Jackie Wilarski did uh, so much for the military, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She, she really did. And I absolutely adore her for that. And she's fantastic when it comes to that. And I totally support that. And I support the military. I 100%. I support our military. I want our military to grow. I want us to be strong in our armed forces and in our um, ability 
to protect and serve our civilians, period. So we what, have to have a good military. So what does a Marla Godet freshman Congress woman look like? What are some of the like the top three things? Usually what I ask people is what are the top three priorities for you going into, into Congress? You're going to be a freshman. There's going to be some limitations on what you'll be allowed to do, you know, that sort of thing. There generally is. But what are some priorities mm-hmm. that you as a freshman in Congress would want to get done? Um, as the freshman, as the new person, I think that it's important to understand that District 2 is um, a big district. We have a lot of counties, and I would want to know, I would want our counties to know that I'm there for all of them and what that looks like from the congressional level. So being able to understand um, what's happening all around congressionally and then how that affects all of us. And so um, we have districts that are really struggling, not just all of us are doing well. And so I would, top three things, I would want to know how education is affected in all of our districts. Um, You know how I feel, Casey, about how some administration is being done in these education systems. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a big deal because that's going to go and go straight down into our economic development. We don't have people being educated well. We're not going to have a good economic force. Um, We have to have people who know what they're doing and be able to work well. And that's going to go into our entrepreneurship. I believe we can have good workers, but we also can have good business owners. So those are things that I would really be looking at. And how do we all come together and be able to be district two to create innovation and this sustainability that's out here? What's going on that we can come together and that we can weather the next 20 years, the next 40 years? There's communities that aren't going to make it. We want to be able to make it. I think that you've probably heard it, and I know that a lot of people have heard me say this on the show. One of the things that frustrates me about this area, and the city of South Bend in particular, but I mean a lot of areas in the 2nd District, is that there's a, a tremendous amount of potential, and our location is one of the, the best locations for economic development in the entire country. And yet I feel like a lot of that's being wasted. And one of the things that, that I am really concerned with personally is just that we don't seem to see a lot of investment in vocational and trades and things like that from the federal government. Is that something that you would support as well? I mean, entrepreneurship is great. There, but there's just a lot of people who don't want to or don't have the skill set or the mindset to run a business, but we we are desperately losing those trades. Is that something that you would push and advocate for? I already do. Let me tell you, they have to do it in a way that this generation, the Zs and the post-Zs, buy into. We could, Casey, it's so easy. This is not rocket science. But you got to know the people. We took a bunch of kids to um, Atlanta Mm -hmm. in May, okay? Hey, kids, guess what? We're promoting the CTE program. What's that? I don't want to do that. I ain't building no house. They (laughs) they just want you to build some ramps. They just want you to build a a tiny house and a ramp. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. Let's go listen. I gave them to two people. No, three people. One was a cosmetologist. Two were carpenters, one and the other, four people. The other was a fashion designer. Okay. Now, (laughs) Casey, I'm not kidding. Two of these people were from South Bend. The (laughs) other was from Chicago. The other was from Detroit. They all were in Atlanta, though. Interesting. All skills people, guess what they told them? Hey, go to CTE, complete. When you get done, we just built the Black Panther set. That's carpentry. Right. Oh, yeah, I do design. I do fashion. As soon as they said Black Panther, that was it. It was a wrap. Kids were like, where do I sign yeah. up? Once what, they understood what? you're building what? sets on movies. And- <laughs> it, it's, a, right. it's a no-brainer. Right. One lady said, oh, yeah, I owned my beauty salon in South Bend for years, and then I moved, and now I do hair for the stars. And then I got sets, uh, um, 
I got the opportunity to be on the set, then I do this, and now I act, and I do this. Oh, you should have seen a hand flying up. You have to make it creative. You have to make it innovative. This is not 1940. Quit telling me when I was a kid, I used to. You're not a kid anymore, and this isn't your era. We have to get out here and be intentional, and you hit it on the head. We moved here from a whole other area and said, what is wrong with people? This is the best place in the world. This is so innovative. This is an opportunity. There's no way that everybody here should not have what they need. All the opportunity is right here. It's a pass-through. It's yeah. a pass-through. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it is. It's, it's right here. It's an amazing. And you can get people trained up to do whatever you need. But you got to teach people and expose them to different things. People don't get exposure here. You have to expose them. So guess what? Those kids now, they're signed up for CTE. How about that? It's that easy. So maybe the, maybe it's just the messaging. You know, maybe it's just uh, we, we got to get them. We got to get them to understand the broader picture that you're not just going to be building cookie cutter houses and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe the skills that you develop doing that sort of thing can lead to building sets on movies and things like that. I got a relative who, who builds sets for, for uh, Disney. So it's, yeah, and, it's and a tremendous what? money and in it, too. Open, well, and you open opportunity to what? Now you bring the movie industry to the Midwest. Absolutely. We have tons of opportunity here. Tons. So, Marla. There's so many connections to be made. So, Marla, it's just, just because of time constraint, how can people learn more about your candidacy and your platform and connect with you? And, and if they want to support you, uh, help support the campaign. Um, on Sunday, we're having an announcement party at Majestic on the River. That's the old Emporium building mm -hmm. in South Bend. The address is 121 South Niles Avenue in South Bend at 4 o'clock. And the uh, Facebook page is Marla Godet for Congress. And the email is Godet for Congress, G O D E. T T E for Congress at gmail.com. Perfect. Marla, thank you so much for talking. And we'll link to your Facebook page and everything in the daily show prep as well. So people can find you, but uh, best of luck in the campaign trail. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Casey. My pleasure. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Coming up next, ladies and gentlemen,